Your Indelible Mark, hosted by radio veteran Shea Parker, offers listeners a chance to hear from real people who are self-made, successful entrepreneurs who describe how they are each leaving their indelible mark upon the world. Listeners will enjoy learning strategies and tactics for success, as well as hearing advice, tips, and coaching from niche-specific leaders on how to overcome the various obstacles associated with being an entrepreneur. We all wish to leave this world with some type of lasting imprint. Ask yourself, what is your indelible mark? Here is your host, Shay Parker. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited. This is Shay Parker, and actually, this is the debut show of Your Indelible Mark. Um, and as our little a helpful intro uh, guy said there, this, this show is actually going to be about um, people that are successful entrepreneurs. So, um, and, and I tend to kind of stick with, um, you know, the spiritual and esoteric uh, side of things because I find that a lot of folks in um, in that, uh, shall we say, line of work or calling are wonderful at what they do spiritually and, you know, esoterically and connecting to spirit and everything. But when it comes to business, a lot of times they're like, ah, what is this? I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here. So we're going to be featuring on this show folks that are actually um, self-employed and they are successful entrepreneurs. And I am going to be sort of, you know, chit-chatting with them and finding out how they are leaving their indelible mark upon the world. So today, folks, we have a very special guest with us. I'm super, super excited to have her on because she is just an amazing, amazing person. Um, I, I love her to death. She is an international intuitive psychic medium, shaman, psychic investigator, animal communicator, and spiritual, spiritual mentor, Deborah Livingston. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Shay. Great uh introduction there thank you so much it's so happy to be here yes we are certainly happy to have you especially for our very first show of this type i, I can think of no one better to to have on here um folks uh deborah is just really an extraordinary extraordinary um professional psychic medium the um the testimonials that Deborah gets on bestamericanpsychics.com is, I mean, they, they are just, they're phenomenal. Her clients love her. She de- delivers evidential information um, pretty much all the time to, uh, to her clients. So I do just want to drop a couple of really quick plugs here for Deborah. Um, if you want to reach her directly on her website, you can go to www.debdeblivemedium.com. And we will have these, you know, links up and everything uh, as well, you know, in, in, in all the, the text. Um, but I just want, wanted to kind of give a quick shout out to her website first and foremost. Um, Deborah is the... Uh, She was the Psychic of the Year on Best American Psychic. She's actually won the 2021 Fabulous Feedback Award um, more than once, I I might add. She's uh, just really, really incredible at her self-employed business. So, Deb, I want to, uh, you know, jump in here. I don't want to do all the talking because that's what you're here for. Um, But our topic today, folks, is actually how being a spiritualist helps Deb get through tough times. So we know that there's a lot going on right now in the world. I mean, gosh, we've got political unrest. We've got climate stuff. We've got, uh, of course, COVID is a, is a massive, massive thing out there. And yet Deborah is still, you know, this successful entrepreneur kind of plugging along, even, even in the midst of all these challenges. So Deborah, can you shed some light on this? I mean, how... How are you doing it? There are so many people out there that are, are really going underwater. They're, they're not able to, to uh, you know, keep their head up right now um, with, with all the trials and tribulations. So can you tell us how, you know, being a spiritualist actually helps you get through times like this? Absolutely. And first and foremost, I am human. So, you know, <laughs> uh, I've had my low moments, as most of us have as well. But I'm a lot quicker to come right back to that state of presence Mm -hmm. and peace 
and try to understand why all this is happening to, you know, our lifetime. And I come back to uh, the seven principles of spiritualism. Mm -hmm. And they really help me navigate through my human journey. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, 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 it, 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 it is classified as a religion. However, it is non-denominational and anyone is welcome. Anyone and everyone, all walks of life, all uh, religions. Uh, there are several of my colleagues who are belong to many different religions who also participate in spiritualism. It's mm -hmm. uh, a way of life mm -hmm. uh, because it does combine philosophy, science, and the etern and eternal energy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so in the center, you have the essence of life, mm -hmm. and then surrounding that, you've got the unity of life, obligation of life, the incentive to do well in this life, the comfort and knowledge in knowing the spirit of life continues after the human life. Uh, possibility of contact to those who have, all, who have already passed. And actually, you also have an assured progression so that mm -hmm. you're, you're always um, progressing in, in the evolution of your soul, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And those are the seven um, principles. It obviously breaks down into much deeper um, understanding. Right. But in, in essence, that's, that's what it is, and we can cover all or one or however, you know, you want to unfold. It, well, it the was, hour it is yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the way they developed is through uh, a very well-known British medium. These seven principles, mind you, belong to the Spirituals National Union, which is about uh, light, nature, and truth. There are spiritual churches in other countries as well as here in the United States. However, they have different numbered um, principles. I personally resonate best with the seven that Emma Hardinge Britton, who is a British mediumship way back when, who mm -hmm. wrote these in trance. She was in a state of trance and her guides came through. And then wow. they were adopted by um, the spiritualism religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just for, just for our um, listeners and, and our readers out there, you can actually find these on um, www.s as in Sam, n as in Nancy, u for spiritual, I'm sorry, spiritualist national uh, union, snu.org.uk and then forward slash seven dash principles. But if you just Google seven principles of spiritualism, um, you will find them as well. And, and you guys can kind of, uh, you know, have a, a, a point of reference where it's actually written down um, for you to, you know, thumb back through or whatever. So, um, so Deb, talk to us a little bit about, I know that you are a very studied um, and educated uh, you know, professional psychic medium. So wh when did you first learn, when and where, I should say, did you first learn about these seven principles? Good question. Um, I always, I was raised um, Protestant, and I just, I, I respected it, but I wasn't sure I fit there. Mm -hmm. And my, my husband's Jewish, and I highly respect that, but I didn't fit there. Mm -hmm. I knew, even as a child, a very small child, that there was much more beyond just living a human life. But it was when I first traveled to the UK, um, my very first time, to go to the Arthur Family College mm -hmm. in Stansted. And when I first read them, I got goosebumps. I so mm -hmm. resonated. It's almost as if I had written them myself. There's no words to explain how I, my body just absorbed, my body, heart, and mind, and soul just absorbed every little word. By the way, depending on which site people go on, 
there are different imp- interpretations. Um, yes. So the text may be written differently um, right. depending on which site they come on. But the best one is the one that you did give, the snu.org.uk. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I do, I do, I see what you're saying here because, so for instance, unity of life, the first principle is also known as brotherhood of man. Uh, and of course they all circle this, they have this lovely graphic here, um, the, the, the center of the circle um well, I guess actually that's the first one. It's the center. So that's called fatherhood of God or essence of life. Uh, and then it, it right. begins, you know, it begins sort of in a clockwise. Yeah, well, exactly in a clockwise, um, you know, like one o'clock, three o'clock and so on and so forth um, on this little uh, graphic they have here. So um, just to let people know, there are different, you know, variations. Uh, however, I, I do want to say that I... I would like to um, I would like to sort of warn people a little bit about not getting if if it, it, the the first one says fatherhood of God, but I I, I would sort of encourage you to not get too uh, attached to the word God um, if you're not. You know, I, I just don't want you to get caught up in oh, this is a religious thing. Um, it could be it could be fatherhood of source or fatherhood of the divine or fatherhood of I mean, you know, whatever. The, the the basic point of it is essence of life. So what I'm saying here is I don't, yeah, I don't want our readers and our listeners to, to be like, oh, well, that's not, you know, that's not for me because of, of the word God. You know? So, uh, yeah, check it out, folks. So Deb, let's, um, you know, we've got, we, we've got the time. Let's kind of go through these a little bit because I, I want to, um, and, and I can just give a, a brief little uh, explanation explanation of each of them and then what we can or you you actually can and then what we can do is um let our listeners know how you fall back on these things you know during times of trouble right. because that's where i really want to get to with this show is um you know being a spiritual entrepreneur is literally your life and I want to share with our listeners who may be out there saying, well, gosh, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm, I, I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. You know, when they're feeling these feelings and they're really struggling because many, many uh, are at this point, I would like to give them some guidelines of how somebody like you uh, implements these into your life and helps to overcome obstacles. So, um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Well, so. I'm 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 not going to um, recite them as they are on um, the the snu dot org uh, website. Yeah, I'm good. So I, I, it's better for me and better for the listeners as well as you to just give my interpretation as good. how I work with it. And yes, by no means is this a, uh, I'm conning you into any. Uh, like I said, it it is called a religion, but it's just a way of life. That's how mm-hmm. I view it. Um, mm-hmm. And so the fatherhood of blank, uh, the essence of life, is kind of like the core belief of the philosophy of spiritualism. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the acceptance of a divine energy. So there's, mm-hmm. no, uh, there's no mistake in that we all have an energy, mm-hmm. e- even, if there, even if someone doesn't you know, have any belief system. We are made up of an energy. Right. And so you can give whatever name to it you want. But the, the bottom line is we are this energy that has been created and there is and sustains all creation. Mm-hmm. Right? So the you could call it the spirit of God, you could call it the spirit, our spirit, you could call it our soul, the divine energy. Again, like you said, whatever name you want to give to it, it exists my belief is it exists within us and around us. Mm-hmm. So if it's within us all, then we're kind of like this one big family. We're this one big blanket, and each of us is kind of a thread weaving within an, on another, making a whole. Mm-hmm. So therefore, we're like this one big family, and we should treat each other as such, regardless if we're strangers or not. And I come back to this during times like we're, we're experiencing 
and do my best to help another that is struggling. And I know that somebody else will help me when I'm struggling. And I certainly did. It put me in the hospital a couple months ago. Right, right. So, you know, I, I came out of it quite quickly because I, I, I had to speak to my own spirit. I, I allowed myself to get caught up in my human ego where I allowed fears uh, to creep in. And we all know fears is false evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. And I just had to bring myself back to the knowledge that this energy that I'm made up of is myself and those around me and every, but everything else around me. Mm-hmm. So that's my interpretation of, of principle number one. Okay. Yeah, I love that. And actually, um, we, let me check our, do a quick time check before we get into the next one, because we're probably going to take a little quick break here in, um, in a few, uh, yeah, about a, a, about a minute and a half. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take a quick break, I think here, but, um, yeah. So with that one, Deb, do you, um, you know, it's interesting. I think lots of times, (laughs) It comes back to, I mean, yeah, the essence of life, but what I heard you say was essentially, uh, in so many words, you know, treat others as, as you want to be treated. And I, I really, I just, I, I, I myself always go back to that because, um, you know, eternal creation can be seen around us and it, it it's in each of us, right? And so really when we're, we're ugly to someone else or we're, we're short with someone else, I mean, we're really... In a, in a very strange way, it, it, we're mirroring back to, to ourselves, you know? So Absolutely. Yeah, and that, that, that really ties very well into um, the essence of life is energy. And if we're, putting, if we're putting negative energy out, then certainly, I mean, it, it, it stands to reason that we're going to get negative energy back. <laughs> you know? Absolutely, so, yeah. So, yeah. A lot of attraction there. Yeah, I, I mean, it's uh, it's really, it's really just amazing, and I think sometimes we get lost in, um, and and I'm guilty of it, you know. We get lost sometimes in the the things that are going on around us, you know, the the political stuff. I know really fires a whole lot of people up, and I mean, myself included. I've been, I, I've. You know, you read this stuff on Facebook and you're like, oh, you know, and it can really just really frustrate you. And it it comes down to where we have to just remember that God or the creative force or the divine being is manifesting directly and indirectly, literally in in all things and in all of us. And, um, you know, we really just have to, I think, be be very mindful of that. So, um, but yeah, it's. It's crazy. But anyway, well, we're going to we're going to take a quick break here. Guys, we are on with Deborah Livingston of deblivemedium.com if you want to check her out. Uh, we'll be right back with more of your indelible mark after the break. Thank you so much. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. 
Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Hey folks, welcome back. This is Shay Parker, your indelible mark. My guest today is the one, the only intuitive psychic medium, Deborah Livingston. And we have been discussing... Uh, today's topic, which actually is, well, it's it's how to get through, if you will, <laughs> all the current hurdles and struggles of life as a spiritualist. We've, we've been discussing, discussing the seven principles. So uh, we kind of covered the essence of life a little bit. So, Deborah, I want to jump into the unity of life, and I want to get your interpretation of that one. Right, and... You know, that's a good segue because, as I was saying before, you know, uh, we're all a thread in this uh, energy blanket, and that makes us family. Mm -hmm. And so the Brotherhood of Man is principle number two, and it's plain and simple. It's just making sure that we can achieve unity throughout the world. And just try and create a betterment to everyone's life, uh, mm-hmm. bringing equality, security, and peace to others. And as, as a spiritualist, there's an understanding that we need to try and help all people, regardless of race, color, or creed. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are family, regardless of any of those things I just said, and essentially the brotherhood of man is just exactly what it says helping yep. one another um because we're all in this together right yes we're all in absolutely. this together absolutely and you know some of us have, have lost people during covid um some of us yes. have lost friends because of you know political reasons mm-hmm. um and it doesn't have to be like that it, right. it, it certainly doesn't have to be like that so you know i believe the universe has delivered these external life situations to give us this opportunity to hit pause and think about what our human life is actually supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And um, it certainly enlightened me to come right back to these seven principles mm-hmm. and re- re-examine them. And it helped me a lot to get through these difficult times. Yeah, that's very well said. Re-examine them because we, you know, we we do tend to, I think, lose track of the ball a lot when we are faced with things that are just so overwhelming and, and it, it seems like you're at the bottom of Mount Everest and you've got to get to the top and you're wearing flip-flops, you know, and it is sort yeah. of like, okay, how in the world are we going to get through but, you know, there are ways, and it's it's just that really, it's really important, as you said, to re, well, remember, essentially, and refocus and re-examine those uh, basic belief systems and uh, the basic principles to to help take us to the next rung on the ladder, so to speak. So, right. yeah, I really, I really love that. I love the Brotherhood of Man. Okay, uh, so I don't want to run out of time before we even get through these. So um, let's hit right. the next one, and we'll just keep rocking and rolling. Uh, the next one is probably the most key principle uh, for spiritualists because um, mediumship is a very big part of this right. way of life. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely um, demonstrated in all of the spiritualist churches. It's not just about communion with the uh, spirit world, but also spirit guides, um, as well as the ministry of angels, which uh, the ministry of angels 
comes through with healing. Mm -hmm. So in spiritual churches, there's always a set time, uh, 10 to 15 minutes where there's hands-on healing done. Uh, mm -hmm. The belief is that this, this divine energy comes through from the universe and helps heal emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical um, um, sickness. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a very key uh, principle within the spiritualist belief. Yeah. So you're okay. And, and again, on the website, it's referring to this as either, um, well, there's, there's a couple of different ways that they describe it, um, which is interesting here, because if it's going, the little chart says personal responsibility and obligation of life. But when you scroll down a little bit further, it says the communion of spirits and the ministry of angels. So, uh, that's a little that's a little confusing. What what is the third one as you as you know it? The third one is the communion of spirits and the ministry of angels. Okay, so they must have this little yeah. chart incorrect here cuz uh, Yeah, it's probably, it's probably written backwards. I don't have it in front of me, but um it's uh, probably yes. meant to be read left to right, which is Oh, which then is it would actually it would it would actually be yeah, it's so weird. They've got that in like the nine o'clock position, um, the communion of spirit. So anyway, all right, guys, forget about the chart. Let's just listen to Deborah. So, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah communion, because I was following along and I'm like, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. So yes, communion of spirits and ministry of angels. And certainly as, uh, gosh, as a the professional psychic medium, that one, yeah, absolutely um, would be critical for you so um but how would you apply this deb to someone that is not you know a professional uh, spiritualist i mean what what would you say to them uh, for this one in in application to their lives well for this one um that's why people come to me because yes. if they they want to have a communion with a loved one in the spirit world um they would go to a medium mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, the, the purpose of communication with the spirit world is to provide guidance in this world. Right. And exactly. to also bring comfort and peace to loved ones left here on earth so that they know, which is a great segue into the next um, principle, so that they know that the continuous existence of the human soul continues. Yes. That's the next principle. And yes. it is possible, because I do it on a daily basis, sometimes seven days a week, bringing this uh, communion, communication with the spirit world to loved ones here on Earth. It's because they, they do look for guidance in this world. Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the fourth principle is the continuous existence of the human um, soul. And... Mm -hmm basically energy is indestructible mm -hmm. so energy cannot be destroyed but it can change form so right. therefore it has been scientifically proven that after uh the passing of the physical body um the soul continues to exist in a different dimension that we call the spirit world the individual right. personality right. continues unchanged by the event we call death here mm -hmm. on earth. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and that is so interesting. Now, just to clarify, uh, the continuous existence of the human soul. So, for instance, uh, to those out there reading or listening, you know, each of us is here, of course, uh, on this earthly plane. And then when we pass and leave this physical body, then our our soul, if you will, which is, you know, uh, energy, essentially, uh, spirit energy, uh, is indestructible. So, therefore, even though we've left our physical manifestation, the spirit continues. Uh, and then the spirit can actually communicate to this world through people like Deborah. You know, because she's a very, very gifted medium. Now, with that said, I want to differentiate, Deb, between 
say, Aunt Betty that passes away and your spirit guides. So can you can you shed a little light on that for our listeners? Uh, absolutely. Um, it is my understanding and belief that guides can remain with us throughout our lifetime and or shift as we need them. They may be mm-hmm. guides that have n- never been someone we knew here in mm-hmm. this world, uh, or they can be, right? or they can be both. I have both. Right. I have yes. uh, my grandmother from my dad's side of, my, of the family, and she has saved my life more times than I can count. But I also um, had a young girl. I can identify her as having a very soft voice with two braids. I never got her name, but she was very helpful to me uh, about 20 years ago. She's come and gone. I know that I had um, an aviator, uh, World War I um, pilot, uh, who I believe was Asian. He's come and gone. I definitely had um, an Indian. He's come and gone. What I feel mostly around me now are our animal spirit guides and still my my grandmother. She's my guardian right. angel and spirit guide forever. So, yeah, wow. they come and go as you need them, yeah, uh, for sure. And I, I'm, I'm pretty positive that everybody has a doctor as well, somebody that mm-hmm. specializes in something that, that helps right. everyone. That makes sense because they there, there's got to be somebody who <laughs> who's over there like okay we we've got to get this taken care of or watch out for that so yeah that that's right that is just fascinating stuff okay uh, let's see I want to try and knock out these so we've got the continuous existence of the human soul now we go to personal responsibility I um. I don't know. This little chart is definitely out of order. So ignore what I said in the beginning of the show following the chart, people. But you can follow the, uh, the, the little order that they have here on the site if you choose to look at it. So, Deb, right. I'm going to bat it back to you. Right. Yeah. Um, personal responsibility is, 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 is pretty huge um, because, you know, we, we've been given this enormous potential and we can manifest if we can think it we can manifest it as long as it's for the mm-hmm. good of ourselves the highest good for ourselves and the highest good for others and mm-hmm. um, we want to use this this potential to improve our own lives and the lives of others and we have free will so we have this ability to make these decisions throughout our lives as we see fit and um, whatever we decide good or bad um, no other person can influence or put right our you know wrongdoing nobody nobody can replace or override our right for personal responsibility Mm -hmm. and um, that is true Absolutely, and that's that's essentially it. We're 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 even though we're in this together, we are one. We're responsible for us and no one else. Right. We can influence. And that's and really help hard to remember. Die. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is a really hard hard uh, principle to grasp grasp sometimes because. You know, I mean, how many people do you know out there that are, you know, like moms all over the world feel responsible for their kids, and especially when their kids are, I mean, I'm not talking about little, you know, little ones, of course, that's that's a bit of a different story, but, you know, when you're up and you're out of the house and you're on your own, I mean, you know, my mom, if she were still here, she'd still be calling me up saying, well, yeah, you can't do this, and you can't do that, and we have to do this, like, mom, you know, I'm, I'm... I'm 35 years old, I'm 40 years old, I'm putting, you know, I'm 45 years old, but, but it's, um, they, yeah, yeah, so that's a, that is a really hard one, I mean, a really hard one, I think, for a lot of people, and it's not even, 
that there's necessarily ill will behind it. It's just this, you know, you feel this responsibility for, for others. Um, but, you know, it is really difficult to, to sort of break that tie sometimes and say, hey, I have to step back now. I'm not responsible for what you do, but I am very responsible for what I do. And that's hard to look at because sometimes it's a lot easier to sort of take care of other people and be looking for looking out for other people and saying, oh, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. And you need but then with ourselves, we're like, oh, yeah, let's just sweep that under the carpet a little bit. And not <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's tough. I mean, that, that, yeah, that's a hard one for sure. So. It, it is a hard one. It, it, and it can it can it can be really deep, too. Um, mm-hmm. And we tend to overlook this, I, I feel like. You know, we don't have control over anyone else. We only have control over ourselves. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like we have the responsibility to have compassion, um, yeah. guidance, support, mm-hmm. empathy, all, all of that, I, I feel, for me, yes. is a personal responsibility. I totally agree. Which actually is a good segue to um, to the next one because how you were mentioning sweep it under the rug. Mm -hmm. Uh, The sixth principle is compensation and retribution, Mm -hmm. and that's here and hereafter for all good Mm -hmm. and evil deeds done on earth. Mm -hmm. So essentially the universal law of cause and effect is in high order here. Um, it's the law that operates here on Earth as well as in the spirit world. So mm-hmm. as we move through our life making these choices, because we have um, the ability and the free will, it, the, all of these are intertwined, if you're noticing a, a little bit of a pattern here. Um, fatherhood mm-hmm. of God goes into the brotherhood of man, which goes into the spirits and angels, which goes mm-hmm. into the existence of the human spirit, the continuous existence of, and then as the spirit here on earth, with this uh, divine wisdom that we've accumulated, we have the personal responsibility, and so that we have that free will choice and personal responsibility to make good choices or poor choices. Mm-hmm. And these choices that we make moving through our life have outcomes. Yep. And these outcomes are as it, it affects our soul growth. Wow. And that... when we leave the earth, there is no real divine judgment, but we, we have all, everything is reassessed and we have to take stock and decide, you know, could we have done it differently? How could we have done it better? And there is compensation and retribution for all our decisions, good and bad, here and hereafter. Here and hereafter. Yeah. Wow. Very, very powerful. Um, I, I think that what, one thing you said in there really kind of struck me when you said it affects our spiritual growth. I think a lot of people do not consider that when they are... Uh, you know, perhaps acting out uh, in, a, in a way that they should not be acting out because as a general rule, we're not trained or, or I think highly practicing of, oh, this is going to affect my spiritual growth. You know, you're, you're so a lot of people li- live in the moment and what they feel. And um, yeah, that's, that's a very, a very good point there. So yeah. Um, here and hereafter. Mm. Strong stuff, Deb. That is it very is. strong stuff. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is. And, you know, I just have to come back to, we, we are human. I'm human. Mm-hmm. You're human. But we're also this eternal spirit having this human experience. So mm-hmm. when, when I'm having a bad moment, I kind of try and look and see where that moment and where I could possibly be fitting into one of these seven principles that could help me move past it or help somebody else move past there. Right. 
That's a really, really good way to do it because what it does is it pulls you out of the moment and it returns you to a grounding where you actually have to focus on something different other than the current experience that's boiling your blood or, you know, freaking you out or whatever the case may be. And I think that's a really good, just, just if nothing else, this is a great grounding technique to remove you and refocus you, you know, uh, when, when you're going through something that is very, very challenging. So, um, yeah. Without a doubt. And all, all of this has helped me come to this understanding that, you know, most people walk their life journey knowing only one of their consciousnesses. Right. When I'm aware of three, you know, um. my my seated spirit self who's the witness slash observer of my other two consciousnesses Mm -hmm. and one of those being you know my awake consciousness and then the other one being the ego Mm -hmm. so that really 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 pulls me back and says look at you know you're 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 just this thread here with everybody (laughs) everybody else's thread so you're a grain of sand in the, in the ocean, <laughs> literally. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. It's really amazing to think of. Um, I think we've got to actually take uh, our last break of the show here, and um, yeah, we'll. we'll I, I I think we're going to get cued for that relatively soon here. So here we go. All right, folks, we will be right back with your indelible mark. This is Shay Parker and Deborah Livingston. Do not go away. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Life is a flow, and enlightenment is simply harmonizing with the way life really is. Then you find that life is effortless, benevolent, and free of all suffering. Hey everyone, this is G.P. Walsh, and I want to invite you to my brand new radio show that's launching right here on Home Times Radio called The Flow of Enlightenment. I've been a spiritual teacher for decades, and my greatest pleasure is being able to share with you these deep and highly practical spiritual ideas. So join me in The Flow every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, and let yourself be transformed. If I could be you... And you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. back. This is Shay Parker, your indelible mark. My guest today is Deborah Livingston. She is a professional psychic medium and we are discussing, we're actually on the uh, seven principles right now of spiritualism and we are just about ready to jump on the very last one. So uh, yeah, we're going to go into that Deb and then what I'd like to do in the last sort of uh, 10 minutes or so is discuss how you, as a professional spiritualist, uh, actually utilize these all in in your daily life, you know, to to overcome the obstacles that you are facing. So let's jump right into the final seventh principle. Absolutely. And seven is, by no mistake, you know, there's seven days and seven principles and um, the seventh principle is eternal progress 
open to every human soul. And this one, I think, is rather uh, important for where we're all at as a collective family uh, suffering through this pandemic and and everything as far as, you know, the weather and um, the earth being mistreated by some humans and politics and all this and how we're, you know, handling this. And Mm -hmm. basically, this principle for me is, you know, eternity doesn't begin when we pass. Mm -hmm. Progress is open to all now. This exact second that we're speaking today on this radio show. So any action uh, we take or intend should be positive because we should take this as an invitation to change. This is our chance right now during these traumatic and emotional moments on earth. We need to take this as an opportunity to promote our soul slash spiritual growth and progression Mm -hmm. and create a positive reaction from what we're handling because adversity is darkness, let's face it. But without the darkness, we can't appreciate the light. So there's always going to be an, an opportunity to develop, right, and move forward. No one right. is ever deprived of this. Right. No one is ever deprived of this eternal progress. So I love this one, especially for, for right now because I am trying to make a positive out of this, out of this uh, negative situation that, that we're all enduring. We're all in this together. One yeah. big family here. And without these seven principles, to be honest, I, I, I might be on the floor in a ball, like, <laughs> right now. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's not been easy, but this is, this is the reason we're here. To, to pick up and use this as a learning curve and to grow from it. Right. Yeah. And so for the people out there that, you know, maybe just starting out or uh, are trying to, especially with all the people that have lost their jobs with COVID and, and such, uh, if they're looking to enter a different line of work or something like that, I mean, how would you say that these seven principles have helped you in your professional life? Uh, I mean, have you, do you feel that they really helped you grow in your business? I absolutely do because I, part of, Part of who I am, I, I take on that personal responsibility uh, principle because this this is my life purpose. I, I'm here to encourage, to to support, to help guide and place positive seeds in in the lives of of my clients. Those uh, there are a lot of people who have lost loved ones, and there are a lot yeah. of people that are on pause without a job but there are also a lot of them that are looking at it as as a positive because now they're 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 able to sit back and create that plan follow their heart uh and change a career into something that they've always wanted to do i had Mm -hmm. a client today he 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 was uh forever a salesman and he's in his Mm -hmm. 70s and he's decided he wants to write his father's life story who was oh, wow. uh, uh, a um, dry cleaner in New York City? Wow! And met actually met his sister, who his father had had another wife on 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 the subway way back when. Oh my gosh, that is crazy! Right? So you know this this gentleman in his seventies is such an inspiration because he's taking his past and turning it into a positive. Mm-hmm. You know, it, these are difficult times, and if we don't use it as an invitation, then 
you know, what are we going to do if we don't use it as an invitation to change? That's absolutely right. And we cannot be so buried in the, the quagmire of what's going on that we forget why we are here, you know? Absolutely. I mean, yes. And, yeah. you know, it. I, I really, the only thing that I can do for those who are in such depths of despair is, is, is send them positive uh, energy and and pray for them because there are certain um, spirits having a human experience that just have gotten themselves to the point of of despair, but they too can turn it around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can, they can, and you know I think that these seven principles are a great place to start because they really are the basics, you know, of, of everybody's life. It doesn't matter who you are, what, what, you know, race, creed, religion, sect, uh, you know, wherever, even, even what financial status you're in, any of that. These are human, you know, base human spiritualistic principles that no matter where you are in your life can, I, I believe absolutely help you, you know, and help the, help the people around you. Definitely. It, it, it's for me, it's just, it's a way of life. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, I, 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 I try my best to be kind to everyone. Mm-hmm. Is somebody going to cut me off in the, in the, in the road? <laughs> Am I going to get upset about it? Of course I'm human. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I'm quicker to pull myself back and say, it's okay. He's in a hurry. I'm not. Right. And He's then not. try and laugh about it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just not worth um, bringing myself to, 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 the, to the negative energy at all right. anymore. Right. Yeah. Anymore. And that's, that is very, very good advice because as we were saying in the beginning of the show, you know, what you put out into the world. I mean, can you imagine just all these people, hundreds of thousands of millions of people putting a bunch of negative uh, energy and, and, and thoughts and emotions and words into the world? Uh, it's, it's actually been scientifically proven under a microscope that your words and your energy matters. Um, they did scientific tests where they've taken plants treated them exactly the same, exactly the same amount of water, exactly the same sunlight, exactly the same room temperature, exactly the same fertilizer, you know, everything, identical. And one plant, they or several plants, they spoke to with nice, calming words and said, you know, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're growing so well. And the other plant, they, they were speaking insults to. And, like... Every time the plant that the plants that were spoken kindly to grew much faster than the ones that had negative energy pushed towards them. So I, I found that fantastic. Same thing with water crystals. Um, they they tested like frozen water crystals and did the exact same thing, and the same results came, uh, or you know the same results were achieved. I, I just find that fascinating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I, I I know that scientific test about the water. It was uh, happy water versus sad water, mm-hmm. and then they froze it, and the sad water barely made a crystal, but the happy water was a beautiful individual snowflake. I know. Isn't that? I mean, and it's water. So that it, that to me that just blows my mind. It's. It's water. Like you, you, so if you think how powerful that is with water, imagine people, you know, um, imagine the people that are treated with ugliness and, and hatred and negativity and, and the ones that are feeling that as well. Uh, and and I, I firmly believe that this is why we have disease and illness and cancers and sickness. And I really do. Yeah. Well, you're on to something there, and this is why I studied as mon- many areas of energy as I possibly can, and 
the Chinese medicine belief system is that all illness and disease is caused by an abundance of an emotion. Yeah, makes total and sense. And cancer are abnormal cells, and you know our cells are like little computer chips. They remember from the moment we were born to this exact second, and if those cells are sad, they're going to get sick. That's right. And I mean, just just consider that your body is what I think eighty percent water. Uh, so so let's take that analogy of the negativity within the water and and place that into your own body. You know, it's it's yes, just mind blowing. Absolutely, it's mind blowing. It is. So and well, that's Deb, why I find energy I, fascinating. It really, really is. Well, we are, this this hour flew by, but I, I can't thank you enough for spending the time with us on our debut show of Your Indelible Mark. Folks, don't forget, if you want to check Deb out live, she is at deblivemedium.com. You can find her there. We truly, truly appreciate everybody for uh, joining us today. We certainly are, are thrilled to be back with Ohm Times Radio and... Uh, Yeah, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Take good care out there, and don't forget to check out Deborah Livingston. She is absolutely amazing. You heard it here, folks. All right, take care. This is Shay Parker. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome, Deb. All right, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye, folks. Bye-bye for now. Take care. Bye-bye.